story time okay so my freshman year of high school i had this group of friends but by sophomore year a lot of the group had already moved to another school so i was stuck with this one girl we'll call her chaparita so chaparita had had this boyfriend since freshman year and there was never any problem between me him or her before we were always really cool so this one day i walk into class and she calls me over to her and she starts telling me about how she logged into her boyfriend's messenger and saw that he was texting someone who had a crush on me and they were talking about me while she was reading the messages, she saw that the person he was talking to sent a message that said, Stephanie is really pretty. And my friend's boyfriend responded with, yeah, she is pretty. So after that, it was kind of awkward, so I stayed quiet because I didn't know how to respond to that. And then she said, he shouldn't be calling you pretty. So I told her to talk to him about it, but she told me she couldn't because she had logged into his messenger without him knowing. So after that, I thought that was the end of it, but then I started to notice that she would try to insult me and try to make me feel bad about myself. She would call me ugly and tell me I was either too skinny or too fat or I didn't have this and that. And at first I thought she was just playing, but then I started to realize that she wasn't. But then, so then one day we were in class and my teacher asked me a question, so I answered. And after I answered, that's when Chaparita said something stupid like under her breath and I was already fed up with her, so I told her something back. So we started arguing in front of the whole class for like at least five minutes. And we actually started arguing in Spanish. <laughs> And in that class, nobody knew Spanish, so everybody was like, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> so then after the argument, my teacher ended up asking me if I needed to step out for a second, but I told her I was okay, so she just continued the lesson. While she's continuing the lesson, I see that Chaparita is messaging me. And I was going to turn around and be like, if you need to tell me something, you could tell me right here, because we're literally in the same class, but I just decided not to. So then I went to go check if she was still typing, but then she ended up blocking me. After that, me and her never spoke again, like she never insulted me again, like I think the argument put her in her place. So then fast forward to junior year, I went to a new school, and this was an alternative school, so there was multiple schools in one about three weeks after school started i'm walking to the entrance and guess who i saw chaparita's boyfriend so obviously we saw each other so we started talking and i asked him if he was still with chaparita and he said yes he then tells me you know she used to talk shit about you all the time right so i asked him what she was saying he said she would call you fake she would call you ugly she would call you a puta she would call you all kinds of things he then said i just don't understand how she would call you fake but she was the one talking about you behind your back and then pretending to be your friend and i told him that i kind of always had a feeling that she would talk about me like that after that we went our separate ways but I still don't understand why she was mad at me. Personally, if I was in her situation, I would have been mad at my boyfriend, not my friend. Story time. When I was 15, I had my first girlfriend. So keep in mind, I was very young and naive. My girlfriend at the time and I were taking things slow upon her request because I was also her first girlfriend. And she was around my age. We met in freshman year and we became best friends. One thing led to another and before we knew it, we caught feelings. Fast forward to my 18th birthday, me and my girlfriend went to a haunted hayride park with my former best friend and her boyfriend at the time. After the night was over, we realized how late it was and we decided to stay at my best friend's house that night. That was the first night we ever did anything. After it was over, my ex went to sleep but something wasn't sitting right with me. My gut feeling, which never fails me, told me to go through her phone first i went through her messages but i found nothing same with her pictures social media and other apps but the feeling still wasn't going away so i laid there in bed thinking maybe i was going crazy but then i told myself go through her notes that's where i found a love letter from a boy we'll call him bob he was saying things like i can't wait to see you i love you i love when you tell me you love me and so on so out of anger i screenshotted everything and i posted it on her facebook all i kept thinking to myself was if she thinks she's going to be happy after i leave her She's wrong because no one wants to be with a cheater. Well, like a dummy, I forgave her. At this point, the cheating never stopped and it was always with boys. I kept forgiving her thinking maybe she changed. Fast forward, it's about two weeks before our five-year anniversary and I find out that she's cheating again. At this point, I was over it. I tried to let it go, but I couldn't, so we ended up breaking up. But we always had a pact to stay friends if our relationship didn't work out. So at this point, it was really awkward, but it worked for a bit. One day when I got home from work, I'm sitting on my porch and I get a message from a boy. We'll call him Frank. We hit it off right from the start and eventually he asked me to go on a date and I said yes. So out of excitement, I texted my ex and she she asked me with who and I told her his name and she was like you're not gonna want to do that because that's Bob's best friend and my heart dropped I told Frank I couldn't go on a date because if Bob is really his best friend then he should know me the next day I asked my mom for advice and she told me that I should do what would make me happy so in the end I ended up saying yes I've been with Frank for three years and me and Bob are extremely close all is forgiven but I don't talk to my ex anymore after finding out the truth from Bob after finding everything out I told my aunt to please keep it a secret I can't look at my sister in the eyes let alone tell her I know the truth after avoiding her for a week, I came to her house and I told her she needs to sit down because we need to talk. I told her about the DNA test and meeting up with my aunt, and that's when she confessed. She told me how she got very drunk at a party and slept with one of the jerks who does nothing but weed every day. She told me how her mom used to convince her father to try to talk her out of keeping the baby, and they were constantly fighting. When I was born, they told her on the spot that she brought shame upon the family and they will not help raise this baby in any way. After a couple of months of loaning from her friends and juggling between working, she decided to run away. She took us to the mall to keep us warm and we started crying. That's when the couple who adopted us now came to our aid. My sister jumped on the opportunity and came up with the story and an Elias. She knew all along that her parents were looking for her. She wrote them a letter saying she's never coming back and they should stop looking. Two years later, her father went on a quest to find her secretly. 
He met me a few times and I knew him as one of my sister's old friends from the park. He helped us a few times and apparently they would meet up once every two months secretly. I'm glad I got to know him at least before he passed away. My husband and I have one daughter, but we really wanted two kids, so we decided to try again. I had a really difficult pregnancy the first time, so I was really nervous about getting pregnant. But luckily, I got pregnant with twin girls. My sister also got pregnant around the same time as me, but unfortunately lost her baby at 20 weeks, and her fertility was extremely damaged in the process. She's been understandably sore about my pregnancy, and her loss has dominated our world. But the other day, she asked me if she could have one or both of my twins, as after all, you have a child already, and you only want two kids, so one of your kids is unwanted, and I want a kid. I know she's grieving, so I had to kindly explain to her why I can't do that. But she said, you have it all, all I've ever wanted. Can you try to be nice to your big sister after all I've done for you? We were on a family FaceTime call, and my dad saw my husband playing with our daughter and said, I'm really lucky to have a husband like him. And my husband said, I just love my little princesses, and I can't wait for the others to arrive from their carriage. My sister blew up on my husband, saying how cruel he is for saying that, and he doesn't know the trauma she's gone through. I feel like I'm walking on eggshells around her. I've miscarried before, and I know it hurts a lot, but I also want to enjoy this pregnancy while I can. I was putting away my boyfriend's laundry and found a ring in one of his drawers. My boyfriend has always been an introvert. I travel a lot for work and I'm gone at least once a week a month, sometimes more. I thought this was good because he likes to have time to himself. He had a lot of hobbies and spent a lot of time with his friends playing games while I was gone. He worked, but his hours and pay were better. I got a managerial position and almost didn't take it because I would be gone even more. He told me to do it and we needed to save for our future and our kids. We talked about marriage and what he wanted. We also looked at engagement rooms together online. The one that I liked is the one he bought. I thought it was for me and I got so excited about it. I was stupid and let it slip to my best friend that I found the ring. She told my boyfriend and that's when they sat me down and told me the truth. My best friend told me she's been sleeping with him for the past three years, like she was proud of it. My boyfriend told me he's in love with her, that she was there for him more. I didn't understand it at first because he told me to take the position and yet he made dumb excuses like that. They were sleeping together behind my back for three years and then they had the audacity to ask me to move out. I made my now ex pack all of his stuff and leave the apartment immediately. I'm completely devastated. Oh my god, yes, I loved her hair. I already saved it to my folder on Instagram for my wedding inspo. You didn't tell me you're getting married. When? Who? Where? Yeah, of course I'm getting married. Eventually. So wait, you have a folder on your Instagram dedicated to a wedding that you don't know when you're gonna have? Yeah, and you don't? Uh, no, because in order to get married, you need to have a man. Okay, Debbie Downer, he's just there as an accessory. What about your hair, your makeup, your venue, your dress, your ring? That's the stuff that matters. That's what's going to stress you out, not the man part. Wait, 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 wait. So you already have those things done even though you don't have a boyfriend? Ugh, of course they're not done. I have my top three picked out and then when the time comes, depending on the season, I'll know which one I want. Shove it in my face one more time that I don't have a boyfriend and you're not getting invited to my hypothetical wedding. Oh, my tooth hurts so bad. Why? Is it loose? Come, I'll take it out for you. Oh, Dad, no, I hate when you use the thread. It always scares me. What do you mean it scares you? It's just thread. How else you can take it out? Okay, fine. Just because it hurts so bad. But please, this time, can you go one, two, three and not just pull it out when you're ready? But Jamie, would I ever hurt you on purpose? No. Okay, which tooth is it? I'm ready. Come here. Okay, please don't pull and just wait for me to breathe and then pull it on three. Okay, ready? One, mm -mm. two. Hey, where's your tooth? Did I get it? Uh, you got. I swallowed it. I, I swallowed you. I swallowed that. I swallowed the tooth. Biakali, why would you smell your tooth? When you pulled it out, it fell in my throat. My boyfriend and I went to his sister's wedding last Friday. They've always had a strained relationship, but overall, it was a great wedding. We were enjoying the party when my boyfriend goes up to the DJ and asks for the microphone. I thought he was going to do a toast for his sister, but no. He asked me to come up to him, and I was terrified. I remember thinking to myself, he is not going to do that. No way. I take a quick glance at the bride, and she is furious. He then proceeds to propose to me at his sister's wedding. Everyone was cheering for us, but his sister just looked like she wanted to cry. I didn't know what else to do other than say yes. I was crying, but not happy crying. After that, I went up to his sister and was apologizing over and over. She was livid. I felt so sorry for her. I left early and my boyfriend came back to the hotel room at 2 a.m. hammered. And so I decided to confront him. At first he was like, babe, my whole family was there and it was the best time. Until he finally admitted that he did it because his sister had ruined his graduation by announcing her wedding. He used my proposal to get back at his sister. I left the morning after and haven't talked to him since. 
I don't know what to do. He won't stop calling, but I'm overwhelmed with emotions. I was extremely hurt to find out that my mom, step-siblings, and stepdad were attending the wedding. When I tried to express my feelings, they dismissed me and said it wasn't their fault that I got in the way of true love and made me out to be some sort of vindictive Disney villain. So I cut contact with them and I barely spoke to my mom in five years. Fast forward and I get engaged to my now husband. Due to COVID, we had a small ceremony and I also fell pregnant. My dad and stepmom have been amazing throughout all of this. She knitted a pair of booties and posted them on Facebook and tagged me about how she's excited for her grandbaby. My mom didn't know I was pregnant. Shortly after, I received a phone call to confirm. Since then, she's invited me and my husband over to her house multiple times. I've declined every single time for the obvious reason. My ex-fiance and stepsister live there. The next time my mom calls, I told her I didn't want them to keep inviting me over when they knew I would be forced to see my stepsister. I'm still hurt over what they did to me, and I told her I wasn't sure if I wanted people like them in my child's life. My mom was crying hysterically and kept saying I was being cruel and I couldn't deprive her of her first grandchild. She kept wailing about how I might be the only person in our family to even give her grandchildren. Am I wrong for trying to keep my mom out of my child's life? I'm a senior in high school and I have a stepsister who is the same age as me. My mom and her dad have been married since we were 10. We both started school again yesterday. A couple of hours into my online class, my mom comes to my room to talk to me. She said that since I have more than enough money to put myself through college, how would I feel about sharing some of that money with my stepsister who does not have enough money? I lost my paternal grandparents three years after I lost my dad, so I inherited a lump sum of money. My mom and stepdad had saved some money, but a few crappy things happened to our house, so now apparently there's not enough for my stepsister to go to college. But I don't feel responsible to put her through college. I also don't feel like my paternal relative's money that's now mine should be used for her. She was nothing to them, and if we're being real, we have no relationship beyond living in the same house either. I told my mom no. She said she was disappointed in me. Later on that night, my mom and her husband pulled me into the kitchen to discuss some things. They told me I'm being selfish and that she's my sister. I said, even if she is my sister, it's not my job to help her through college, and that's my money, and it will not be used for something I do not approve of. Apparently, I'm the asshole for refusing, according to them. So it got me thinking, should I help my stepsister out?